I'm Robert Jarvinpaw, uh, representing the uh, Fall Antique Show at Rhinebeck, posted on Ruby Lane. Great. And uh, I, glad I, to meet you, Lee. Robert, <laughs> Robert, it's great, great to be here. Great, great to be here. And thank you for, thank you for bringing these pieces to the this uh, online show. And you have a lot of Native American things, wonderful Native American, American things. This is your specialty, right? Yeah, we specialize in uh, historic Native American ethnographic items. Right. That's, and how long have you been in business? Uh, collecting for 50 years and dealing for maybe 25. Wow. That's very, very neat. You said you'd seen my father, one of, my dad, uh, Ron Kino, at one of the shows years ago. We did. We, did. we set it up right next to your father. Uh, and uh, he, he introduced himself by saying he was the father of Lee <laughs> and your brother. <laughs> and you had no idea who that was. No, we, we were aware. <laughs> and uh, he was obviously very proud of you. Oh, that, that, that's, that's sweet to hear. He's, we're, we're proud of him. The best dad in the world, my father. Best dad. But... So, what piece would you like to talk about first? You have this well, lovely basket. We have here a late 19th century uh, Acumel or Odom uh, or Pima uh, coil basket mm -hmm. with uh, uh, quadruped designs, which could be horses or dogs. Okay, so this is made in what part of the uh, United States? This would be the Southwest. Okay. And uh, so. made of uh, yucca coiled yucca with uh, devil's claw for the dark uh, designs devil's and motifs. Claw. So what is that is that a weed? It's a, what, plant. a plant. Yeah, okay. native to the southwest. Great. And and this is probably about 1885 to 95 somewhere okay. in that territory. So just as just as the uh, we were pushing into that area, we then do pushing into that area. But they were th this is not made for the for the for the Western population, for the you know, was it made for was it for their own use or something to be sold? Do you think? Well, it's possibly both because uh, at that time tourism was beginning yep. in the Southwest, so you did have items like this made for for the early tourist trade as well right. as uh, local use. Yeah, so it could be could have been either, right? Either, either, but. Really firm, strong. It looks like the condition I know could sometimes be, be really worn on these, and this is all intact. This is very tight, um, yeah. virtually no damage, so it's uh, almost mint right, really for its nice. age. Really nice, yeah. really nice. That, that's very nice. And this basket. Well, here's another basket. Uh, this is uh, get that. Yep. cover on there. This is from the northwest coast. It's a uh, ah. Nootka, or as they call themselves these days, Nootcha Nulls. Okay. Uh, it's a uh, twined uh, cedar and uh, bear grass okay. uh, basket with motifs of whalers, whale hunters. Oh uh, yeah, three little guys in the boat right here. Seabirds, yeah. and uh, on the cover there's a, uh, a whirlwind uh, motif for the wind is that represent? representing uh the wind that's wonderful i think that's that's so modern looking in a way you know not that you, you know it's date wise but this again is, this is uh probably 1890s and yep. what's amazing about this is virtually no fading of the dyes yes so and it's it, uh on the inside especially and and here i i realize that this might, might be some the, the condition is overall just seems amazing i mean first of all but there's a little bit of dust that would have settled uh, as i understand it right sure. on top sure. and that's why it's a little darker there than the, the, the inside the yeah. and less air would have gotten inside the you know obviously than the but, and of but course the, the sunlight too in uh, the sunlight yeah yeah that of course those three things but that's the condition is just something amazing and northwest coast material is quite desirable I it, it, it is it is and uh, again to get a basket from late 19th century with virtually no breaks or uh, yes. unraveling is is difficult so they so. 
these are one of the one of the, the it was the Tlingit and the Quakutal, right? And I'm probably saying the names all no, wrong. No, you're but, saying them correctly. <laughs> but uh, but that, and this is another uh, the Nootka are right Nootka. next door. They're on Vancouver Island. Okay. And uh, adjacent it. areas, and they were one of the few Northwest Coast peoples that uh, did whaling. So it's it, interesting to find that motif. Yes, the it's whale boats. I think it's I think it's very neat that you know in on this this boat has four guys in it. This one just three. Yeah, that's it's this one four, four again. So it's not. It, it must have been going along and saying, "Up, oh, we can only fit three in this one because we yeah. did these." <laughs> not totally symmetrical, I guess. I, I like that, you know, <laughs> because it shows that they're just, it, you know, it, I, I, I can see this being sold because I know that in in the 1890s we'd we'd already gotten over there, but it's not like this is a 1920s basket where or 30s where most of the things we're seeing. Are made are for a tourist, tourist market, trade. right? Right. So exactly. It, so again, this is kind of uh, on that transition point yes. from uh, from uh, no tourism to very early beginnings of uh, of making uh, a living. Yeah. <laughs> you know, basically yeah. with the with the West. Very cool. Very cool. Um, how about this? Okay. Here we have a uh, what's called a double barred. <coughs> Lorraine trade cross. This is uh, ah. some kind of alloy of copper and silver with uh, crown and uh, sacred heart motifs. This was probably made by a silversmith in Montreal. Okay. The uh, touch mark is actually here. I haven't been able to track down who D.E.W. actually is. He would have <coughs> been Native American though? He would have probably been a European, uh, ah. a French Canadian silversmith, but this was for the Indian trade. These are our Hudson Bay Company glass trade beads, or red beads with white hearts. Okay. And so these crosses were uh, part of the gift trade uh, f by the Hudson Bay Company to the, their native clientele okay. to get to kind of fuel the fur trade. Okay, so these are both. Both of these were really came from the West, but they're they've been, they were. Am I right? They were sold by the Native Americans. Is that right? Uh, well, they were or, actually, uh, in many cases, given by the traders. Got it. To to the Native clientele. Got it. And uh, the fact that you have these religious motifs, the uh, of course the crown, the Sacred Heart, shows their oh. syncretism with uh, both Native and. European religions. That's interesting. So, I, so it has to. So it's probably even though they were, is the animism that they that they actually believed in, right? Animism. Partly. Uh, sure. Partly. Uh -huh. uh, but animism and Christianity combined into one. Is that? Uh, is yeah. That, uh, am I interpreting right? The fact that you know by the th this probably dates by the way from late. Uh, 18, uh, late 18th century, early 19th century. Wow, that's early. So that's great. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at it, and you make that makes sense. With these, pardon me, but with these small um, incisions here, a uh, little on the edge, a uh, little uh, uh, what it, I'm trying to think of the word for it, like almost a hatch marks. Hatch of. marks. Thank you. And and well, anyway, very cool thing. I like the like the patina, the abrasion here, mm -hmm. also uh, in. And the change in color, really a nice piece. It's uh, and how about let's see. Okay, here we have a uh, a Northern Plains uh, uh, knife scabbard and fully beaded on the front with a uh, uh, bison hide uh, back. Some people might call that parflesh, and uh, you have these geometric designs on a white field, probably. Lakota, okay. one of the Western Dakota groups, okay. and uh, again a late 19th century date, mm -hmm. roughly, uh, with metal mm -hmm. tinklers, and so very decorative, but right. meant to hold a, a, a knife. A knife, right? In nice condition. This really uh, was used. Well. Would this this have been a trait as something probably then against possibly sold? To, to Westerners, it doesn't look like it's been used. It might have, may, but it would yeah. have been something a, a tourist would, I say a tourist, yeah. a Westerner yeah. would, would like. This one, is, it's a little more difficult to say. I think 
that age for the Northern Plains, it probably wasn't less likely to be a tourist item. That's I, great. I think this is more likely uh, something used, something used yeah. and kept in the family, and eventually an heirloom. Wow, I, it's yeah. really. I mean, the yeah. preservation is just amazing. Yeah. That, that's again, so cool. very little damage, if any. And would this have been uh, what hide would this be? Uh, this this is uh, a piece of bison hide. Bison hide. Yeah. yeah. Very nice, nicely but the, sewn. The front is probably uh, on, on deer hide. Yes. Easier okay. to uh, sew into. Here we have a, uh, again, a Northern Plains item. Right. It's a uh, umbilical, what they call an umbilical fetish in uh, turtle form. Okay. And these were meant to provide ritual protection for infants. And so mm -hmm. what you have here is a little incision that was made to insert the uh, child's umbilical cord. Really? So I'm you have sad. a connection between the, the, the fetish and the child wow. and a spiritual uh, protection of the child. That's fascinating. And I never knew these existed. So it's been it, it cut and then sewn back. Right? Sewn back inside. And, but this has the American flags on it. So Exactly. So this shows also the growing appreciation of the power of the flag, right, and ah. so the, the flag symbol often represents uh, not not just power, but you know patriotism because people uh, by the early 20th century, uh, Native Americans often uh, served in the military, beginning okay. in World War One. Wow! Uh, so, you know, having the flag displayed at powwows and other ritual gatherings became very important. Okay. But this is much earlier. This is. Uh, Late 19th century, and already the flag is showing up. That's very cool. This, this is quite rare, I would think. This is very rare, I would say. I, yeah. I, I, I'm really, really amazing. I mean, it's because it's, I'm glad you explained this because I'm thinking, you know, it's a ritualistic thing. It's something to, 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 to offer uh, good luck, I guess, to the child. Good, good Good fortune and tidings and all protection. that. Protection. Yes. So there probably is an, an umbilical cord in there if we uh, were to check. If if you were to open it up, yeah. you would find uh, an a dried cord. a dried umbilical cord. I can actually feel uh, something under there. You can actually feel it. That is that is really cool. And the blood that's here, possibly the blood uh, that looks like dried blood. Uh, well, yeah, we've uh, actually we've wondered about that ourselves. It could yeah. be. It could be. Uh, or some other kind of uh, substance that got on there. Yep, I realize that this also could be the oxidation from this rust, from these two tassels, possibly. Very possibly, yeah. Only because there's two dots and there's, there's uh, right there, yeah. Good, good point. Well, just, just, just a guess, but... Uh, but that's, that's likely, probably, I think. Yeah. Probably because there's two, ta two and two. But that, that is so neat. I never knew, even though that knew this existed, yeah. this, this, this type of... I guess uh, fet fetish, right? Would you call it? You could call it Umbil fet umbilical fetish is a term often used. An um and umbilical fetish in the form of a turtle. Of a turtle. And what did the turtle represent? Well, turtle is very powerful animal all throughout Native America. I mean, people growing up here in the Northeast know that with the Iroquois, of course, the turtle is a powerful right. symbol for you know kinship, the turtle clan. Yes. Uh, but even out in the plains, uh, the turtle sometimes they're more like a lizard form, but. Right. Uh, but, turtle is a very uh, powerful animal spiritually, also in folklore, yeah. kinship, was, and and also uh, strong because that shell was, uh, you know, it, 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 I would it think symbolizes it's, strength, strength. And, symbolizes uh, strength, and endurance, long endurance. life. Right, right. That's fascinating. Yeah, a concha belt uh, we have concha here, belt. Lee. Uh, yeah. This is a nice one because it has eleven. Uh, very heavy sand cast silver uh, curvilinear buckles mm -hmm. or conches, and each one has a fairly large uh, turquoise cabochon. It's pretty special, isn't it? I mean, because it's not. I, I know. I know they did a lot of turquoise things. They do it today. I know. How old is this? Maybe well, this? we think the silver part, the conches are probably from the 40s. The belt was probably replaced. Okay. The leather part yes. was re replaced because uh, you can see the trademark yes, right. here from yep. Glo Globe, Arizona. Yep. So uh, did you check to see when they're, they're in business or Bacon's Globe, Arizona. But it, but it, but I, it doesn't matter because it's a, a replacement, but they, it seems like it has 
this even has some age, maybe, you know, 10 or 20 years, 30 years. or Yeah. But the original, you think these were done in probably the... Probably the 40s. 40s. They're beautiful. And each one, each one, of course, nat, nat, in natural form, I mean, and, 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 right, and polished, I guess, right? Uh, yeah. When I say natural form, I mean, would they, would they actually, they feel kind of tumbled, you know, but uh, were they, but turquoise are usually smooth like that, aren't they? Uh, uh, I guess if they're, if they're polished, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they'd be polishing at that time, or would they? I don't know. Well, I in the '30s, do you think so? I think so. Yeah, and um, the, it's a really it's we a haven't really cool we haven't uh, monkeyed with the silver. We haven't polished the silver because uh, we we like keeping the the patina, the older patina on there. I think I'm so glad you uh, you did. Somebody looks like they're even a painter that wore it once. They got some. <laughs> some somebody got yeah, very very possibly a painter. <clears throat> Or drip a little bit on the on the buckle. Either on that, the or edge. they wanted to wear one way. Wanted to remember which way was up. I don't know. Can I try? It? Can I put it on? Yeah, absolutely. Just, do you mind? I'm going to carefully go like this. I got it. I got you it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That, look at that. I we'll have to eat some uh, less pasta, I think. But it's really, yeah. really cool. This is really, yeah, very cool. Yeah. Because you left that that surface. I don't like them all often as shiny like that. Yeah. Looks very fine on you. I'm oh, thanks. Say. It's a very nice belt. A really special item, very yeah. rare. This is uh, again a plains item. Probably again yeah, northern plains came out of uh, Wyoming, so probably uh, it could be Cheyenne. Very Cheyenne. likely Cheyenne. Mm -hmm. And it's a uh, beaded uh, ration ticket pouch or bag where people would store the ration tickets that the Indian agents gave for getting your beef ration. This is after people were relocated to reservations. It's sad. It's a sad time. No but longer had access to the bison and other animals. Right. But in this case, this, this ration ticket bag right. was also used as a strike light bag because inside was yeah. an iron or steel striker right. and a native piece of worked shirt. This is not a European gun flint, but actually a native form of flint from Chert that was worked. You can see the... Uh, you can the, see the, 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 the notches. The notches uh, taken out. Would have been uh, done with uh, deer antlers sometimes? Probably with a, some kind of buffalo, bone or, some kind or, of, or, or antler. Of course, out there you went, not deer antler, sorry, but... Uh, uh, antelope. Yeah, antelope, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's... Very, very cool. And each, each, people, I, I, you know, I didn't realize until I learned when I was like, like 12 that I found a little tin box, a, a Western version of this, uh, that the, to make, make, make a fire, you took the, is this a form of flint? You take it, it is. Sure, it's a form of flint. Okay. So, and you start to do a spark, make a spark, right? Exactly. And would dry, uh, some dry uh, tumbleweed or, you know, something, right, something uh, leaves. Like Grass, something very dry. <laughs> plains grass or something. Yeah. yeah. And then start that fire. And this is what you hang on to, right? When, yeah. when you're doing it. You just, I, and this, I, I'm not sure if this was meant just to provide extra uh, grip. Yeah. But, uh, it makes sense. But they, they uh, this made this into a kind of a multi purpose bag. Yeah. And. Uh, very cool. These are very, very rare. Uh, I mean, it seemed rare, and to have it come with this, this Western-made wrought iron uh, uh, striker uh, and the flint, all in one bag, and they, you bought them just like this, right? Exactly. How cool. Yeah. That's no, no ration ticket, but I've, <laughs> I've, I've uh, seen museum collections where they've had the ration ticket yes. with the bag. Yeah, but, it, but again, multi-purpose. I mean, who, yeah. it just... A, a, it gives you some insight into how people lived... Uh, you know, that this was yes. part of their daily fire-making kit. Wow. Very cool. This wow. is actually a, a mid-20th century piece, probably from the 50s. Uh, it's a pipe or calumet or pipe bag right. uh, of home-tanned or brain-tanned... Uh, brain-tanned? Uh, Where's that? hide or elk hide. Elk hide here, right? With uh, beaded panels with a mounted warrior. And again, you have the prominence of the American flag, and on the reverse side, it's a, a different color combination. Wow! But the same uh, design. Right. 
right? The same and, design, really, uh, really bold. Very, and very the, bold. Long right. fringes and t uh, metal tinklers. Right. Also some uh, brass bells for extra sound. Right. Wow. That, uh, this is a wonderful piece and, and in uh, great condition. Right? It's uh, it's excellent condition. And, and you say it's uh, mid 20th century, so it's probably 1950s. Yep. Uh, yep. Also Northern Plains. Um, this I think came out of Montana, so it might be uh, Black Blackfeet or Crow. Uh, one of those two groups. It's wonderful. I mean, so your wealth of knowledge, of, your a wealth of knowledge about these things and about all these pieces and about a Native American culture. You're an anthropologist yourself. Right? Uh, I'm a retired uh, it, it, anthropology professor. For I was for 40 years. <laughs> wow. And my wife Hetty Jo, who helps me with the business, uh, she's also uh, an anthropologist, archaeologist. So she. She's had a lot of input into uh, researching these items. These items we well, do them. We do it together. It's nice you give her some credit here. You know, she 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 wouldn't get dinner later. She wouldn't get anything later. <laughs> I, you I wouldn't, wouldn't get. You wouldn't get <laughs> she wouldn't talk. To I'd me. be using the strike light. <laughs> <laughs> well, having talked with both of you earlier about some things, I, I, I the, the 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 amount of knowledge you have between the two of you is enormous. And the nice thing about people, about the nice thing about um, buying from the two of you from your business is that people know what they're getting and you also guarantee everything we so, uh, we guarantee everything uh, we research everything well thank you for being part of the fall antiques at Rhinebeck hosted by Ruby Lane thank you uh, thank, thank you Lee. Really great. appreciate it thank you